Hi, I'm Pastor Roger Brown. God has gifted me the pleasure to pastor a dynamic, spirit-filled church called Life Changers Church International right here in Pittsburgh, Kansas. I believe God will use this sermon to impact your life and bring His greatness out of you. Man, I hope you get something out of this that will change your life. God bless you. Your time is very important, so I'm going to get right to the message. Have a wonderful day. Well, glory. Hey, Amen. It's good to be here tonight. Praise God all the way into Kansas. Hey, Amen. You know, we, them 10 revival was pretty amazing back in the day. Power God moved. Um, the atmosphere was amazing. How many knows him, the atmosphere tonight is very important? Amen. Because what needs to happen in the atmosphere tonight is we need to allow the, the Holy Spirit of God time to move. Amen. I do want to take the opportunity tonight and to honor the man and the woman of God of this house, Brother Roger and Sister Anna. And I want to thank them tonight for allowing me to come and minister behind their pulpit tonight. Amen. Um, and I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight and to allow me to be a servant unto you. Amen. I will be honest. I was pretty nervous when the brother asked me to come minister because I haven't preached anywhere in my church other than my church for the last 10 years. So I'm a little jumpy tonight. To, amen. But the Holy Spirit of God is in this house tonight. Amen. I'm kind of like the Apostle Paul. I didn't come tonight to preach to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. But what I did come here tonight to do was to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit of God in this house. Amen. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I feel a, a shift in the atmosphere, and I'm feeling a shift in the body of Christ. And what I believe God's doing is he's moving his people closer to him in this hour. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. So what I want to do tonight is one more time, I want us to stand to our feet for just a moment. Amen. Just a moment. Because understand something, the atmosphere is important. The Bible says that God, he inhabits the atmosphere where the praises of his people are going up. My sister that started the service tonight, this is what she said, and it stuck with me, is that I came tonight, and I want to walk out of this house different than what I came in. I want to tell you tonight that your heavenly father, he loves you so much that he wants to do something completely mighty and amazing for you tonight so that when you walk out of this place tonight, you do walk out differently than what you came in because I believe what's going to happen tonight is a breaking up. Uh, come on, there's going to be a breaking and there's some things that are going to turn loose tonight and you're going to feel the release. Hallelujah. But how many knows what is important tonight in the house is unity. Is unity. The Bible teaches us in the 15th chapter of the book of John, Jesus said this very clearly. He said, I am the, the vine and you are the branches. He said that the, that the branch can do nothing absent of the vine. But he said, if you abide in me, and my words, they abide in you. He said, ask what you will, and it shall be done. Tonight I look around the room, I see a big branch. And what needs to happen tonight is simply this. The branch needs to come into unity. Come on, so that the power of God can flow in this atmosphere. We've been wiring a house, amen, and we didn't put no junction boxes in the house, and I'm so glad, too, because the junction box is where the power goes in and it spreads out. But if that box shorts out, Brother Larry, the power only goes so far. Come on. We don't want to short out tonight. What we want is perfect unity in the house, and we want the power of God to be able to reach as far as he needs to reach in this place tonight. Amen. Because I promise you, there are some of you are walking out of here differently than what you came in. And I will tell you, because I felt like God sent me on assignment. 
You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? You might have just showed up here, and I didn't just come to preach to you tonight, but I come to be obedient to the Holy Spirit of God and to do what God has called me down here to do. I was nervous when I came down here. Amen? Paranoid. I'll be honest with you. Woo! But I feel the Spirit of the Lord in this house. So real quickly, because I know how church bodies are, lift up your hands tonight. If you're in this house tonight and there's any ought in your heart, if there's any unforgiveness in your heart, because you want to talk about something that stops the flow of the Holy Spirit of God, that stops the move and the power, as you let there be some unresolved issues down in your heart, and it'll quench it so quickly. Amen. And it's important tonight that the Holy Spirit be able to move in this place. How many knows we can have a great worship service and, and, and I can get up here and I can minister the word of God to you, but if the Holy Spirit of God isn't allowed to operate and to move and to accomplish what he came to do, uh, then friend, we should have just stayed home. Can you say amen tonight? Hallelujah. Let's let the power of God move in this house. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. The title of the message tonight, if I were to give it a, a title tonight, it would, be, it would be this. This is the move. This is the move. And you say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm thinking about James chapter 4 and verse 8. And the Bible says this. He said, draw not to God, and God will draw nigh to you. Come on, somebody. And, and when you look at that word draw in that passage of Scripture in the Greek, it means simply this, to apply pressure on something to cause it to continually move in a direction. And can I tell you tonight, I believe that's what God's doing in the body of Christ, is he's starting a move, a shift in the body of Christ to draw us closer to him. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Come on. God's been dealing with you about some things. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. God's trying to get us to move. How many of us that our Heavenly Father is a progressive God? Yeah. Come on. He's progressive. You say, Pastor, what does that mean? He wants us to move. And he's constantly moving. The Bible teaches in John chapter 15 that he is our Heavenly Father. He is the, the garden dresser. What does that mean? That means he prunes and he, and he moves stuff around. And I believe that the, what, that's what God's trying to do in our lives tonight is to move some stuff around. Uh, but understand something. Sometimes in order for God to, to move us to the higher ground or to another level, God has to prune back some things uh, in our lives tonight. Amen. And, and I want to tell you that when God begins to prune some things uh, back out of our life, how many knows it's painful? And immediately misunderstood. See, I believe there's somebody here tonight, you've been going through some things and you've been questioning God. God, I don't understand why I'm going through this. I don't understand why I feel the way that I feel. God's simply saying this, child, don't you understand what I'm doing? He said, what I'm doing right now in your life isn't because I'm against you, but what it is is because I'm for you, and what I'm trying to do is move you uh, into the realm that I've called you to walk in. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is trying to orchestrate a mighty move, a shift in the body of Christ tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we just worship him one more time in here? Hallelujah. I like to let the Holy Spirit move. Hallelujah. When we were in revival with Brother Roger, and I like being real. How many likes real? Man, I tell you what, church is full of a bunch of misfits, amen? Church is full of a bunch of messed up people, and you know what? We're just all trying to do our best to make heaven our home, right? I was dealing with anger. Man, I don't know if anybody in here has ever been angry before. I mean, to the point that, I mean, it's just tearing you down. But I remember when we were standing in the service that night, didn't nobody have to lay a hand on me? Didn't nobody have to call me out? Didn't it, nobody have to say nothing? 
And I was standing there, and, and, I, and I was in the presence of the Lord, and God began to reveal some things to me. And, and, and at that point, the Holy Spirit opened up my heart, and I felt the hand of God reach into me. And he lifted up the spirit of anger, and he removed that thing. Come on. Can I tell you, he's a deliverer tonight. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Before we leave tonight, there are going to be some broke off things. Amen. Come on, somebody. Before we leave tonight, there's going to be some broke off things. I need to minister to somebody. This is what I do. I'm sorry. This is me. Somebody here tonight, you've been struggling. You say, Pastor David, what are you talking about? I've been struggling. See, God's asked you to do something. And you've been trying to accomplish that very task. But see, the problem of it is, is simply this one thing is that you've been trying to do what God has asked you to do in your natural ability. And now you find yourself in a place of frustration. And you say to God this very thing, God, it doesn't matter whatever I try to do. Nothing seems to work. I'm just going to be real tonight because that's what I like being, it's real. Hey, I'm not a perfect man. I'm just like the rest of us, man. God's trying to teach you, y'all can sit down. God's trying to teach us some stuff, hey, amen. God's trying to get us where he needs us to be. And see, God, God, I'm a man of vision. How many, how many people in here tonight are people of vision? Baby, let me tell you something. You better get your vision because if you don't have one, you're in trouble. Because let me tell you something. The Bible says that people without a vision, they perish. Well, God gave me a vision. Mm -hmm. Come on, I'm going somewhere with this. Hang on with me. I bought a house. Because I'm trying to get myself in a position where I don't have to work and all I can do is minister the word of God and be who God's called me to be. Come on. And I got this house, and it's set for two years. Brother Larry, no matter how much I tried to, to bring this thing, because it had been gutted out, and I was trying to get it back together so I could do something with this thing and, and, and understand something. Man, I'm a giver. I, I, I give my tithes. I pay my tithes. I do what I'm supposed to do, you know. <laughs> I'm standing in church when I see God's still working on me. And I need to tell somebody tonight, understand something. You're in a process. Come on, you're in a process. I will tell you to not stop being so hard on yourself because you're in a process. Amen, and understand something. Your heavenly father is doing something in your life and he's working some things out to move you to a place of perfection. So tonight, just sit back and enjoy the ride because that's what God's doing in your life. Uh, because there's been many times I struggle trying to fix me and I realize something. Guess what, Brother Larry? I can't fix me. But I know somebody who can fix any problem that I'm faced with tonight. And so this is what happened. I'm standing in service. Man, it's funny. Sometimes God got to get me in crazy places to talk to me. I don't know about if you like me. He got to hem me up somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Kind of corner me down. You know, because my mind goes all the time, you know. And so I'm standing there, and, and, and I'm not even the minister that night. Man, of God's preaching, you know, and I'm standing there, and God began to talk to me. How many of us know if we'll listen to him, he'll talk to you? Sometimes I think we don't listen to him because I think we don't like what he's about to say. Yeah. We like it when he answers in his our way. Come on. So I'm standing there, and God began to talk to me, and, and, and this is what he said to me. He said, you're not trusting me. It gets quiet in here then. He said, you're not trusting me. I said, God, what are you talking about? He said, you're not trusting me with your finances. God, I pay my tithes. He said, but you're not trusting me. He said, son, don't you realize something? You've been trying to do this all by yourself. He said, what you're saying is that you know more than I do. How many of when I'm trying to do it myself? Boy, when I'm fixing to get into something, it's about to get crazy in here. I got to minister to somebody before I leave here tonight. And, and when I do, you'll know it's you. Man, I lost my thought. Praise Jesus. It'll come back to me. 
But he said to me, he said, you've been trying to do this yourself. He said, you know what that is? I said, what? He said, that's pride. I said, God, what are you talking about? He said, didn't you not read James chapter 4, verse 6? And I said, yeah. He said, what does it say? I said, it says this. God give more grace to the humble, but yet he resisteth the proud. And that word resist means he opposes the proud. I said, what? He said, I'm opposing to what you're trying to do because you're not trusting me. You're not being humble before me. You're not letting me be God. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. How does what grace is? It's unmerited favor, according to the Greek meaning. And the Bible said it gave more favor. More favor, more favor, more favor to the humble. But yet he opposes the proud. And I'm like, God, are you kidding me? That's me? He said, yes. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Woo. I cried. I kind of feel like David when the prophet looked at David and said, David, you the man. That's my name too, David. <laughs> God said, David, you're the man. He said, you ain't been trusting me to be God in your life. You haven't been trusting me that to, 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 to lead you to know that I have the answers for what you're looking for. I repented. I repented. You, you say, well, Pastor David, what happened when you repented? Can I tell you the minute I repented and I turned to God, that house is going together so fast that it's, it's blowing my mind. I said, God, you knew exactly what you were doing when I began to move into that realm of saying you're God and I trust you. So tonight I believe it's about a move. All right, this is where it's going to get sticky. How many ever moved before? How many ever moved before? Y'all like that? Why? It's not fun, is it? But have you ever noticed sometimes that when you get ready to move, this is what you do? You pull the trash bags out, right? He said, Pastor, where are you going with it? Well, this is what we do. We pull the trash bags out, and we begin to look through the stuff that we have, and we begin to decide within ourselves what we want to keep and what we want to get rid of, and we take it out to the garbage, and we leave it. Or unless you're like us, you buy a bunch of storage buildings and hoard the stuff up because you don't want to let go of nothing. Can I tell you, that's what's going on in the church tonight. God been trying to get us to get rid of some stuff, but we won't part with it. We hoard those things up and it's no wonder we're not moving forward man gotta give up some stuff amen that word in the, that word moving definition simply means this to change your position pastor what did you just say change your position how many knows that God's trying to get the church to change their position no I'm, I'm going somewhere with this but how many knows it's hard to move forward in God when we're still holding on to some junk we still got some stuff that should have been gotten rid of a long time ago but we found ourselves in a position we don't want to part with nothing God's simply saying, how can I move you to a higher place when you're still holding on to the things that have been holding you down for a number of years? You wonder why you're sitting in one place and not moving forward in God? It's because God's been dealing with you about dumping some stuff. Dumping some stuff. I like to call it getting rid of the baggage. See, he said for us to lay aside every weight. Notice he said weight and sin. Weight. Anybody ever try to run with a pocket full of weights, baby? You can't run this thing. You get tired easy, right? So understand something. There's some things that the enemy likes to lay in your life that are called weights that prevent you from moving where God's called you to move. Come on tonight. Hallelujah. I believe God's trying to, to create the shift. 
in the atmosphere and when the shift in the atmosphere begins to take place there's some deliverance going to take place in the house of God tonight and I believe that's what God's going to do tonight I believe tonight God's about to do something crazy come on and mighty amen this is where I'm going to go right here I laid down today trying to take me a nap Man, sometimes I don't care how hard you try to take a nap and get lazy. God won't speak to you in the midst of your sleep. I couldn't sleep. I'm laying there and I'm doing my best. I want to take a nap and God begin to talk to me about a young lady. I said, God, what do you mean? <laughs> Here we go. Man, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but you better hear me. God said that. You having some difficulty with relationships. And I want to tell you tonight that the difficulty with the relationships you're having also affecting your relationship with your heavenly father. And you say, Pastor David, what are you talking about? Understand something tonight. To, amen. There was a time in your life that something got done to you and it was wrong. Understand something. It was wrong. But, but since that point on you've made every man that's coming to your life pay for the mistakes of the past and God's simply saying that every time I've intended to bless you Every time I've tempted to move you forward into the place that, that I intended to bless you, you still allow the enemy to lay those things in your life. You're carrying around all of that baggage. And you've even said this to yourself, God, I've given that to you. God said you haven't given it to me. Oh, you've been down to the altar and you've cried about it. He said, but when you got up from the altar, amen, you, you, you still, amen, are dealing with the same situation. And you say, well, pastor, why am I still dealing with the same situation? Because it's simply like this. You didn't give it to God. You say, how do you know I didn't give it to God? Because this is the thing. When you got up from that place, that thing that's been in your life for all these years, still defining who you are. God's simply saying that's your pride. You say, how can I have pride? Because you pick that thing back up and you claim it for yourself. Hmm. My goodness, Jesus. My goodness. Man, I don't know who I'm ministering to tonight, but you better hear me. Man, the Lord would not let me sleep today because of you. And, and it's not because your heavenly father doesn't love you. <laughs> Baby, it's because he does. <laughs> it's because he wants you to know tonight he wants to break it. He wants you to know tonight that he wants you to walk out free. Uh, he wants you to know tonight that you can trust him uh, with what's going on in your life. Uh, how many of us what needs to happen tonight is simply this. You need to relinquish ownership. You need to relinquish ownership of this thing. You say, Pastor, how do I know when I relinquished ownership? When it stops defining who you are. When it stops hindering what God intended to bless you with. Come on, somebody. There's a shift. There's a move taking place in the house of God tonight. Amen. God simply wants to move you uh, uh huh. Sometimes moving God's people is a difficult thing. Come on. Sometimes we're so stubborn. So many of God's people are struggling right now. Underneath my voice tonight, underneath this roof, there's a lot of struggle. And can I tell you, your Heavenly Father didn't intend for you to struggle with what you're struggling with tonight. I need to tell a young man here tonight. Mm -hmm. God said, I called you out of gross darkness into my marvelous light. And yes, and yes, while you were in the gross darkness, it left some mark on your life. 
But God's said to tell you the mark on your life doesn't define who you are. The mark on your life reminds you of who God is and what God's about to do in your life tonight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Listen to me. Listen to me. God's got a plan for your life. But it's time to let some things be broken and removed out of your life. I don't know who I'm ministering to. But I know that God's been speaking this to me all week long. You ever had God just pouring in, pouring in, pouring in, pouring in, and it's coming so fast? I mean, it would be easier to just get a notebook and write it all down, but I can't write that fast. My brain don't work that fast. Can you tell by the way I'm talking? I mean, I'm not like, I, I don't have enticing words of man's wisdom. I got simple speech tonight, amen? I'm from Oklahoma. But I understand how the power of God works. And I understand that he's a deliverer tonight. And if we will allow God tonight, he will move in this house with such a magnitude. But see, understand something. you got to come to a place of realization and realize this one thing. If I'm going to be free, I've got to relinquish ownership of it tonight. Come on, somebody. i got to let it go. I've got to let the power of God move in my life. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands up toward heaven tonight. Mm -hmm. Let's give him some praise. Come on, I, I just like to let the Holy Spirit do the work. Amen. I feel the power of God in this house tonight. I feel the power of God in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to give you some praise and some glory. She called it he kohosha, he Lord, he da da bo kiende de de be kese. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit, move in the lives of your people tonight. Hallelujah, I need a young lady right now. Boy, you said, Pastor, you are putting me on the spot. Come on, I need a young lady right now. I need that young man. Stand right here for me, sissy. Come on. Come on, Pastor Roger. Hallelujah. That's crazy, ain't it? Crazy how God works. Can I tell you, He loves you so much, man. So much. Wouldn't let me even have a nap today. That's all right. I come here tonight to serve you, to be an instrument in the hand of God. Amen. Hallelujah. How many says I want to let that go? Say, God, I give this to you. I relinquish my ownership, and I trust you. Say it again. Lord, I, I'm giving this to you tonight, and I'm relinquishing my ownership, and I'm trusting you. And let me tell you something, when the breakthrough comes, there's an explosion going to take, take place inside of your spirit tonight. Just let go and let God have it. Lord, I relinquish my ownership. And God, I give this to you and I trust you. I relinquish my ownership. Come on. How many would just simply say, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You believe it? Then, woman, thou art loosed. Just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There comes the breakthrough. You believe it? Then, woman, thou art loosed. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God's bringing you into a different place. Come on, some. You're about to see some light in the midst of the, the, the darkness. Come on. There's a breakthrough, there's a shift, there's a move taking place right now. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. yes Jesus. Yes. Yes. yes, Lord. Woman, thou art loose tonight. Let me tell you something. The enemy wants to, to wreak havoc in the lives of our young people. Do you know that God intended for the relationship between a man and a woman to be a blessed thing? Yeah. A beautiful union, a beautiful thing? The enemy hates it. 
He hates it tonight, wants to destroy that thing. But there's some breakthrough coming tonight. Come on, young man. Where you at? Hallelujah. Man, this is a big guy. Hallelujah. Two? I get two? Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands, my brother. Hallelujah. God said it doesn't define you. It doesn't define you. But who I say you are defines you. And the labels that the enemy have placed on your life, I have peeled them off. And I was saying to you, my son, mm, that thou art my son in whom I love and am pleased. And I was saying to you that from this day forward, mm -hmm, yes, Lord, the breakthrough, the breakthrough. The breakthrough. Come on, my brother. There's a breakthrough waiting to happen inside of you. Come on. We came into this house. We come in here to do to walk out of here differently than what we were when we came in. There's a breakthrough. You got to let go. Just simply say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I'm surrendering this to you. It's not going to define me anymore. It no longer has any power over my life. It's not who I am, but I'm who you say yes. I am. Father, let that confidence come, Lord. Let the boldness rise up in this man of God tonight, Lord. Father, there's a move taking place. There's a shift taking place in this house right now. Father, there's a move and a shift taking place in this man of God here tonight, God. Hallelujah. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. Power God, fall on this man of God tonight. Open your heart, brother. Open your heart. Hallelujah. God's pouring. Receive what he has for you tonight. Receive that breakthrough. Receive that victory. No more power over your life. Come on. Say that for me. No more power over my life. Come on. Say, I am free. Can I tell you, the Bible says, who the Son has set free is free indeed. Yes, sir. That, that means without any question. Come on. Without any question. Come on. Hallelujah. Man of God. Doesn't matter about yesterday. The past means nothing. It doesn't say who you are. It doesn't, it doesn't dictate over your life. That, that right of the enemy was, was broken. At the minute you accept Christ into your life and the blood of Christ was applied. God said, I'm moving you. I'm moving you past this place. I'm moving you where I've called you to move to. Hallelujah. Bless my heart when I walked in here tonight and there you were. Amen. God's got a plan, my brother. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for my brother right now, God. Father, breakthrough, Lord. Father, a breaking taking place right now. There's a shift in him, Lord. There's a, there's a move, God. Father, there's a progression taking place right now. Father, Lord, you're removing some things out of his life right now. And Father, he's moving closer to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Right now. Right now. Right now right now hallelujah power of god in this house tonight i said the power of god is in this house tonight there's a deliverer in here tonight amen hallelujah usually i preach for a long time i, I i've got to where i preach a little while and let the holy spirit do the rest amen how many of is important to let the, the spirit of god move in this house come on listen to me tonight can we lift our hands you say, Pastor, why you keep getting us to raise up our hands? Because how many of us are in the atmosphere? The atmosphere is important tonight. Hallelujah. It's important. 
There needs to be one-mindedness in this. There needs to be unity in this house tonight. Now I'm going to get real in here. That's all right. See, I didn't come here to not condemn nobody. I didn't come in here to not to point no fingers. That's never been my life. My life is this, is I come to proclaim. I come to proclaim liberty in the house of the Lord. Amen. I come to proclaim freedom in God's house. Not one of God's people in this house should be dwelling or, or, or battling with anything. Come on, listen to me. Ooh, Lord, help me, Jesus. My Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Man, it gets tough right here. If you're here tonight, and you say, Brother David, I've been, man, nobody knows what I've been going through. Nobody understands what I'm going through. I, I'm even afraid to talk to somebody about what I'm struggling with. <laughs> It's amazing what the Bible says. How many of us are supposed to confess our faults to each other? And I don't know about you, but sometimes that's a scary thought. <laughs> Woo, baby, I won't tell nobody what I'm going through because if I tell them, they're going to want to tell somebody else. Everybody's going to know. I want to tell you something. I was a cheater. Oh, man. Woo, Lord, help me, Jesus. Pastor was a cheater. But all anybody ever saw was a symptom of a, of, a, of, a, of a worse problem. You say, Pastor David, what are you talking about? I battled a spirit of rejection for a lot of years of my life. And when you battle something like that, really what you're looking for is just for somebody to give you the attention you need. But how many of those when that takes place in your life, you find yourself, you go looking for love in all the wrong places? Come on. You say, boy, what kind of preacher are you? I'm crazy when I promise I'm from Oklahoma. But it created some issues in my life. Yes, Jesus. My Lord, man. Shoo, get ready for it. Get ready for it. But it caused some issues to take place in my life. It even affect my walk with God. It affect my ministry. But how in the world could the pastor go talk to anybody about what he's struggling with? Can I tell you something? If you don't deal with it, God will make sure you have to. He said, Pastor, what are you talking about? He'll expose you. He'll bring it to the place that you have to face it. But my cheating wasn't the problem. The problem was what was going on underneath the cheating. Yeah, everybody's listening to me now. I said, oh, my God, he's talking about cheating. He was a cheating preacher? No, come on now. But I come to tell you tonight that no matter what you're going through, God's a deliverer. I come to tell you tonight that if you'll trust him and let him have it, he'll set you free from it. My dad, can, I'm just going to go here. My dad, and, and I'm going to see him this week. I hadn't seen him in 10 years, and I love him. My dad left when I was two. But before, before I was born, my dad wanted my mother to, to get an abortion. And so from my womb, the spirit of rejection was sold into my life. And then it took off when I was two. Come on, I, I don't know why I'm going here. But it done something to me. It created a void in my life, an area of my life for the enemy to work in. Mm-hmm. How many of us, that's what the enemy wants to do, is he wants an area of, in your life that he can work in? Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. You say, Pastor, we're children of God. We got all the power and got all the authority. Do you not understand something? If I do not submit under Christ's authority, then I cannot walk in the authority. 
So when I, the Bible said in James chapter 4, verse 6, what did he say? He says, verse 7, he said, submit yourself therefore unto God. When I submit unto God, I'm submitting to God's authority. Therefore, it gives me the authority to walk in his power. Come on, somebody. And when I submit myself to his authority and I resist the devil, the Bible says he flees. But understand, what was done to me created a void in my life. It left me wounded. It's kind of like this. If I, had a, if I had a runny nose and a cough, what would you say I had? You wouldn't just say I had a runny nose and a cough? You would diagnose me, wouldn't you? Because I would, you would say I have a cold. Well, how do you know? Because a runny nose and a cough goes with a cold. So you would say I had a cold and not just focus on my symptom. Ain't it funny sometimes how as children of God, we want to focus just on the symptoms, uh, treat the symptoms, but not deal with the major issue. Some of us tonight got some symptoms going on in our life, amen, and what people are seeing, they're calling you by what they see, but there's a greater problem underlying there. You know what they call me? This is what they call me, cheater. And you know what they said? Oh, once a cheat, always a cheat. I beg the difference with you. Because I can tell you that there's a delivering power from the kingdom of God, amen, that will break that thing off of your life. You won't have a desire to cheat no more. But what had to happen, it wasn't the cheating issue that had to be dealt with. It was the rejection issue that was happening in my life. And what had to happen was this. I didn't trust fathers. I didn't trust fathers. But my heavenly father said this to me. Your natural daddy may have left you. He said this to me. He said, but I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you always. And can I tell you that when the realization of that hit me, that place in my life that was opened by the enemy before I even came into the world, God healed that thing because I realized something. I had a father that I could depend on. I had a father that was not ever going to fail me. And then sometimes how we allow what our natural father did, boy, sometimes we allow what our natural father did to us to give us a distorted perception of our heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why we carry so much stuff around because we don't feel confident enough to take it to our heavenly father because we feel like he don't care enough. I come to tell you tonight, the devil's a liar. Come on, I come to tell you tonight that the devil is a liar. But see, God delivered me from that. And guess what happened to the, to the symptom? Go on, brother. I don't have a cough or runny nose no more. Come on, somebody. Sometimes as children of God, if we're not careful, we'll walk around with these holes, these gaping holes, these wounds that's coming to our life. God said, let me move on that. Let me move on that. Mm -hmm. Let me move on that. Man, here we go. See, I didn't, I didn't come preach to you guys. I come let the Holy Spirit move. So if you're here tonight and I ministered to you right now, and I know that I am to somebody right now. I know that right now there's a hole in you that's so big. Mm. The enemy's created a rift in your life, and the hole is so big. You're bleeding out. The life is bleeding out. Your hurt is bleeding out. But I want to tell you tonight that God wants to close that thing. I want to tell you tonight he wants to heal that wound. Let me tell you something. It's a funny thing about a wound. You can carry that thing around for all of your life. God wants to close it for you tonight. Listen to me. Come on. I want you to move right now. I know where you're at and I know who you are. 
But I, I'm like this. Unless the Holy Spirit of God tells me pull you out, I'm not doing it. I just need to stand right here and get ready to receive what God has for you tonight. Come on, somebody. I know you're here. Don't be afraid. Listen to me. There's nothing you could tell me <laughs> that would ever change my opinion of you. You say, Pastor, how do I know that? Because I've had them stand in my office and tell me some stuff that made me blush. Come on. And you say, well, what did you say? I look at that man of God and say, I want to tell you something. Come on. You say, man of God. I said, yeah, man. I told you we're all messed up people. Oh, we all deal with some things that we shouldn't have to deal with, but the only reason we deal with them is because we want to address them. Come on. We go through some things, and we, we go through those things simply because we want to face it. You know, it had been easier for me just to go to somebody and say, hey, brother Larry, man, I need to talk to you, brother. I have a desire to go out and cheat. Can you help me? He'd be like, no, brother, but Jesus can. Come on. Come on, it's a deliverance tonight. I don't know what tomorrow night's going to bring, but tonight it's deliverance night. Come on, we're setting the atmosphere. There's a, there's a shift tonight. Hmm. My Lord, a shift. God said, I'm shifting you. I'm, I'm, I'm moving you. I'm moving you into something new. I'm moving you to a new experience tonight. But in order for that to happen, we got to deal with some old things. We got to deal with some of those things you've been bagging up, but yet not throwing out. Come on. And, and, and when I say those things, I'm not doing it in a condemning way, but I'm doing it in a, in a loving way to tell you that you don't have to continue this way no longer. No longer tonight. Would you meet me right here? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I want, this is what I'm going to do. Y'all don't think I'm crazy. Okay. Sometimes to get the Holy Spirit to get us to move, it's sometimes difficult. And you say, Pastor, how do you know that? Because understand something. If the Holy Spirit could move us so easily, some of us wouldn't be going through what we're going through tonight. But we've allowed the enemy to convince us it's just the way we are. Uh-uh. That ain't the plan your heavenly father have for your life. Come on, that's not the plan. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold my hand out here like this. Boy, when you say, Pastor, you're putting me on the spot. Baby, it ain't, it ain't me putting you on the spot. It's Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit wants to do something in your life tonight. He wants to bring a change in your life. He wants to set you free tonight. He wants to close up that hurt in your life. Hey, it might have been there since you was a little girl or a little boy. It might have been something that happened because your parents done to you in your life. But I don't know what it is, but God knows what it is. And if you allow him tonight, thank you, Jesus. Father, Lord, right now, God. Father, not because I'm anything, but God, because of who you are, Lord. And God, because of the faith of this man of God tonight. Lord, as he believes you tonight, God. Father, that you're able to do what your word says, Lord. Father, that according to his faith, thou be made whole tonight. In the name of of Jesus right now. Father, there's a wound. Father, that you're closing. In the name of Jesus right now. Father, there's a wound. God, that you're mending right now. God, it's not that he ain't going to remember it, Lord, that when he does remember it, there's not going to be any weird feelings about it, Lord. And God, what the enemy meant to discourage and to tear this man, get this man of God down with, God is going to become a word of testimony, Lord. He's going to testify. The Bible said that we overcome them by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb, God. Father, touch my brother right now, Lord, complete and utter Victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will tell you tonight, for a man to get up isn't easy. You know why? Because us guys, we're prideful. We are prideful. Very prideful. We are. Amen. And sometimes it's just hard. But God said, what I need you to do right now is I need you to be humble. 
If you show me a humble spirit, I'll show you some crazy favor. Hallelujah. Father, right now, God. Lord, my brother, just he, he come up here tonight, Lord, and he's showing a humble heart, Lord. But God, he needs a move right now. He needs a touch right now, Lord. Holy Spirit of God, move on this man of God right now. Bring the victory. Bring the healing. Bring the breaking and the breakthrough right now in his life, God. Hallelujah. Father, what the enemy meant for bad. My Lord, he better look out because you're about to make some good come out of this thing, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus, I feel the power of God all over you, brother. Come on, lift up your hands tonight. Power of God, Holy Spirit of God all over you. Let the Holy Ghost move. Power of God, open up your mouth. Say, yeah, Lord, yes, open up. Yes, power of God all over you, my friend. Yes, Lord. No more. You hear me? No more. Three. Yes. Three. Now what I yes. need you to do, I need you to find somebody and you tell them all about it. Don't be ashamed yes. to open up your mouth and tell anybody yes. about it. You know why? Because that's what God did for you. That's what I tell them all the time. You say, Pastor, are you afraid to tell people you was a cheater? No! Because that's what God did for me. He set me free from that. Hallelujah. Just, just praise him. Come on. He did that. He did that for you because he loves you. He loves you. His love for you is unfathomable. Let me tell you, there's no boundaries to how much God loved you. He said before he even knew you, he loved you. He commanded his love towards your life. Even while we were sinners and the world threw us away and said the world doesn't want no more else to do with us. I felt like that. I felt like the man I was tossed in the ditch and left there to die. A man that nobody else wanted anything to do with me. And God walked by me. He said, I want you. I said, God, are you sure? Are you sure the world don't even want me no more? They don't use me up, throw me away. God said, I'm just beginning, son. He, I'm just beginning. God said, he's just beginning. Get ready for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless my brother Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He said, Pastor, you crazy. No. No, I, I, I didn't come just to preach a word, man. I didn't. I, I didn't want to just come down here and preach. This is what I've been praying. You, you say, God, you, you know, I want you to use me more, you know. And he said, oh, I've been preaching a lot of funerals, you know. So you're getting used, you know. Not me, man. That's what I said to the Lord. I said, God, I, I've been kind of a chicken. Any, any, anybody relate to that? And I said, God, I've been kind of a chicken. And, my, and, and I don't know about y'all, but I think God places people in your lives to be spiritual fathers, right? Mentors. Amen. And uh, I think I had one of the greatest, one of the most anointed ones that there ever was, you know. And uh, I don't know if y'all ever remember Brother Edder. Uh, that was my spiritual dad, man. I could call that guy in the middle of the night. He just gave me a word. But before he died, he preached revival for me. And this is what he said to me. He said, you're my spiritual son. And just like Elijah did to Elisha, he said, my mantle, he said, I'm giving it to you. And I said, God, <laughs> what? What? And, you, and if you knew how that brother operated, man, I, I'm having some big shoes to fill. But see, it's having confidence not in, in me, but in God, you know, trusting God and believing God. Let me tell you something. God will never take you any place to mean you any harm. And there's not ever been one time in my life God's ever made me a fool. Now the devil, on the other hand, whoo, Lord have mercy. I was a fool for the enemy so many times. I'm being a fool for Jesus, but that don't ever happen, amen? I don't know, maybe it does. The Bible said through the foolishness of preaching, some will get saved. Foolishness tonight. I got to do one more. <laughs> Listen to me. Come on. One more. This time it's female. And there may be more than one. I feel like there is. He said, Pastor, what are you doing, man? I'm obeying God, man. Y'all want revival? Yeah. Revival has to take place in a shift. And in the shift, the body of Christ has to get what they need. How many of us, if we're still lacking, how can we take in our lacking out to the world and minister to the world effectively? God said, I got to heal the body. And I believe that's what the shift is. God said, I'm shifting. I'm moving. <sighs> man. All right. 
feel like there's a, there's a brokenness in here tonight. A heart of disappointment. And when I say that, I don't know what the disappointment is or where it came from. But all I know is it's affecting your life. And in the sense that I say that it's affecting your life, it's affecting your feelings about yourself. And I can understand and relate to that because when I used to look at myself, I used to hate me. And you say, Pastor, how could you hate you? Because I hated the things I did. And it caused me that when I looked into the mirror at, at, at the person looking back at me, I didn't like that person. And I never could understand how God could. Because you know what I used to tell him? So God, I don't know how you love me. I can't love me. And it affected my walk with God. It affected my confidence. I was kind of like this when I got here tonight. I'm like, I'm going to go in there and find me a corner so I can hide. And pastor don't put me a place on the front row. But I need to tell you tonight, God's tired of you being on the back seat of life. And he's ready to move you to the front row. You got a decision to make tonight, my friend. Let me ask you something. With, it, with it, the way it is right now, how's that working out for you? I ain't even opened that water. <laughs> you could have got me a thimble. I've been fine. Seriously, with what's going on right now and how you feel about yourself right now. Mm. See, you don't love yourself. And to be honest, you're harder on yourself than anybody. Come on. And, and I know how difficult that could be because so many times I try to change me on my own. Come on. So many times I try to change me on my own. And, and, and let me tell you something. Man, I can't change nothing. I'm better change my shoes, Brother Larry. They ain't got strings on them. They just slip on. But I tried within my own ability trying to fix me. And guess what I couldn't do? I couldn't fix me, sissy. I couldn't do it. So I had to go to the one who created me. I had to go to the one that knew how to fix what was broken in my life. Come on. You ever asked yourself something like this? Man, why didn't my daddy love me? What, what was so wrong with me? <laughs> you know what it was? This is what it was. The enemy knew what God was going to do in my life. I will tell you tonight, the enemy hates the anointing of God. He hates the anointing. And he comes against the anointing to try to snuff out the anointing of God in your life. Amen. Come on. He understands that when God created you in your mama's womb, he didn't create you without any thought or any process about it. But what he created you with was intention. That God had a divine master plan for your life to use you for his glory. But the enemy showed up early to try to stop the anointing of God in your life. Well, God sent this crazy Oklahoma preacher down here tonight. To tell you that what God started in your life might have been delayed, might have been slowed down, uh, but I come to tell you that what God started in your life tonight is coming to pass. So tonight is your night. Tonight's your healing. Mm -hmm. I need some, I need, I need ladies. I need some ladies right here. Ladies. To make a half a circle for me tonight. You say, boy, you a crazy, crazy preacher. No. No, baby. Let me tell you something. I love all you people. And I don't even know you. <laughs> but what I do know is I know this. We, we, we're kindred spirits. We're the same family of God. You've been sent back here way too long, girl. Get up there. 
Come on, come on. I want you to get up here with this, this young lady up here. Hey, man, God's been, God's been trying to do something with this young lady all night tonight. Hallelujah. Right now, come on. He loves you tonight. Amen. Lift up your hands toward heaven tonight. Amen. Father, right now, God. Father, there's a healing taking place. God, it was not anything she did. But, oh, God, what the enemies tried to do in her life tonight. God, and Lord, right now, I believe in you, God. Lord, she's believing you for a healing, Lord. Amending, God, in the name of Jesus right now. Just give it to him tonight, okay? He's been talking to you back there. Huh? You know? Amen. And, 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 and the reason you're standing here tonight is because you're simply saying, God, I'm ready. I'm so ready. Yes, God, right now. She called it all. Father, right now, Lord, Lord, you God, I'm ready tonight, Lord. I'm ready for what I need, God. I'm ready for the touch. I'm ready for healing to take place in my soul, in my spirit, in my heart tonight, God. Sissy, you have been fearfully and wonderfully created by the hand of God, and don't you let the enemy deceive you and tell you anything differently tonight. Fearfully. Wonderfully created. Hallelujah. Worship him just a little bit, okay? I want you to stay at it till you get your breakthrough. And when it comes, you're going to feel that release. It's going to be a hit. How God going to hit you. And you're going to feel that thing break off. Lord, I thank you right now for victory. tonight, God. Thank you, Lord, for these ladies tonight. Father, I thank you for my sister, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, right now. Lord, the devil's a liar tonight, God. This is a mighty woman of God. This is an anointed woman of God. This is a hand-picked woman of God tonight, Lord. And God, I pray for strength, Lord. God, I pray for healing. I pray for stirring, Lord. God, she's catching a boldness. She's catching a Holy Ghost boldness. Hallelujah. God, she's going to open her mouth and speak, Lord. And God, she's going to do it with confidence and assurance, Lord. God, that what she speaks is of you. Hallelujah. Father, right now, God, in the name of Jesus, power God all over you, sissy. Power God all over you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this young woman of God right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in her right now, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I believe there's a healing, Lord. There's a mending. God, there's a disappointment. There's a hurt that's closing right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, you see the root of this thing, Lord. And God, and I believe right now by the root, Lord. God, that right now now by the root, Lord. It's coming out. It's coming up, Lord. It's not going to have any more power, Lord. God, she relinquishing. She relinquishing ownership, Lord, in the name of Jesus right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. tonight, Lord, that doesn't define who she is, Lord God. And Lord, I'm praying right now for strength, God, and a healing in this woman of God right now, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, she's going to open up, Lord. God, she's going to let them in. She's going to let them get close, God. Hallelujah, right now, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, 
for the enemy to hurt and to inflict and to wound, Lord. But, oh, God, I know that you are a healer tonight, Lord God. Father, that through all the disappointments and all the letdowns, Lord God, Father, you're raising her up, Lord God. And, Lord, she's going to be that mouthpiece you called her to be, Lord, under that anointing that you called her to walk in, Lord God, right now. Lord God, hallelujah. tell you the Bible says this there's nothing impossible for God come on how many knows how how come things don't happen because we do that and you say pastor what are you talking about the Bible said that without faith it's impossible to please God I believe it's Hebrews 11 and 6 he said but those who diligently seek the Lord he rewards how many of us have some reward taking place tonight? And you say, Pastor, what do you mean? Because we're seeking the, the power of God tonight. He's in here. He's in here. Hallelujah. Atmosphere is always, always remember one thing. Atmosphere is important. Atmosphere is important in this house tonight. Come on. Openness is important. The Bible said he'd take the foolish things to confound the wise. Some people might think, well, Pastor, you're foolish. No, baby. <laughs> no. He takes the weak things to overtake the mighty. And you say, Pastor, why does he do that? Because understand something tonight. God wants the glory. God wants the glory. I prayed all day today. I said, God, let me go tonight. Let me serve you. Let me be a servant in your hand. Let me be an instrument in your hand. Let me be like a scalpel with precision. Not, not because of me, but because of him tonight. Amen. There's never any reason when we walk out of the house of God, if we come in one way, we should always walk out different than what we were when we came in. If we choose to walk out the same way we came in, it's not because God didn't want to do it for us. It's because we chose we weren't ready. 
Come on. Now, there's still some ministering going on in this house, but this is what I want to do. Every head bowed in this house, nobody looking around. This is the most important part. You might be here under the sound of my voice tonight. You say, Pastor. And I'm not going to ask you if you're saved. I'm just going to ask you, are you where you're supposed to be? Because I can tell you tonight we can be saved, but not be where we're supposed to be. And I find a lot of times what happens is children of God, we're saved. But baby, we're not moving where we're supposed to be. A lot of times what happens, we move in the wrong direction. And while we're moving the wrong direction, we're complaining to God why things are not going right in our life. Anybody ever do that? Oh, me. Man, if I could learn how to praise instead of complain, I'd be in good shape. But if you're hearing the sound of my voice tonight, you say, Pastor, I'm saved. I, just don't, I don't know what's going on with me. I don't have the joy I used to have. I don't have the peace I used to have. I just don't, I'm not motivated. Can I tell you what happened? The enemy slipped up behind you and hung something in your life. And it's called a weight. And in and, and all reality, if I was to say that to you, it's not a weight. And I was to say to you, give your weight a name. Boy. Pastor, you mean I got to call this thing for what it is? Absolutely. Absolutely. I got to call it by name. I can say, well, yeah, I got something going on. What is that something? So this is how I'm going to put it. If you're here tonight and there's something in your life, you say, I need to lay it down. I don't want to know about it. I don't even want to know what it is. Because you know why? Jesus already knows what it is. So this is what I want to do. There's, a, there's some stairs here. We're going to say this altar tonight. You say, why are you calling this out like this? Because you want a revival? How many of us said the revival had to begin at the house of God? And how many of us said judgment got to begin at the house of God? Come on, somebody. There's an altar up here tonight. Hey, Amen. If there's something you need to leave, and let me tell you something. Don't you pick it back up. I had a young man come to service one night, and, and I'm a, I was police at the time, you know. I'm not, I'm not really police no more. I'm just a preacher, and I'm a, I'm a registered nurse. But anyway, and he come up to me, and he said, Pastor, I got to give you something. You know, and I'm just like, yes, I put my hand out there. He give it to me. I shove it in my pocket. I went home later, and I reached in my pocket. I said, what's that? Oh, that's what he I pulled out. I got a bud of marijuana in my hand. <laughs> Babe, I got some weed. Where'd that come from? Got it at church. But can I tell you, Jesus take you just like you are? Man, he just wants us to give him some stuff. I read in the word of God, and, I, and I'm facing a close because I've been going forever, but, but, but I feel like God still needs to do something in his house. This is how God is. He said, I'll trade you some beauty for your ashes. I'll trade you beauty for your ashes tonight. Amen? What does that mean? He said, you bring me the mess in your life and I'll trade you for something beautiful. Oh, Jesus likes messes. I was a hot mess when he found me. Amen? So if you're here tonight and you need to lay some stuff down tonight, man, this is just the beginning of the revival, baby. This is where it begins, right here. And can I tell you, it doesn't matter who you are in here tonight. You might be a pastor. You might be a preacher. You might be an evangelist. There might be some things we need to lay down too. Come on. Lord, I thank you for these young people. Man, I tell you, God's doing something in young people. I need some praying saints to gather around these young people tonight. How many knows how to pray in this house? I tell people all the time, they say, well, I don't know how to pray. You know how to talk to me? Yeah, I talk to Jesus the same way. Hey, you ought to hear how I talk to him. Sometimes I'm walking around work talking to him. People think I'm talking to myself. My wife will say all the time, are you talking to yourself? Oh, no, I'm talking to the Lord. She'll be like, it sounds like you're just talking to anybody. I do that. I can't help it. I talk. I don't, I don't have no fancy, fancy anything. I say, all right, Lord, I need some help, man. And I say it just like that. Like, I need some help, man. You know, and he, he's there. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. 
Father, I thank you for revival tonight. I thank you for the touch that's happening in this house tonight. I thank you for the breakthrough. Come on, somebody. There's a shift. There's a change. There's a move happening in this place tonight. Amen. And I guarantee you when you walk in here tomorrow night, you come with a different mindset. You're going to come in here tomorrow night, you're going to be free. And watch the atmosphere. Watch the atmosphere. Whew. It's amazing how fast you can run when you're not carrying weights. It's amazing how much you can shout when you're not weighted down. It's amazing how fast you make yourself available for, to the Holy Ghost when you feel accepted. Sometimes we let the enemy convince us we're not accepted because we got something in our life. Can I tell you, everybody in this house, you got something going on? Hmm. Baby, if being perfect is what it took, I'm going to, go, I'm going to sit down because I don't have it. God didn't expect us to be perfect because he knew we couldn't be. But he did expect for us to walk in victory tonight. That he paid for. How many would accept his grace? How many accept his grace tonight? That he paid for. How many accept his healing tonight? That he paid for. How many accept victory tonight? That he paid for. Come on, somebody. He paid for all of that. It's mine. I just got to take it. Thank you, Jesus. Crazy Oklahoma. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Man, I tell you, I love young people. I love to see young people on their faces before the presence of God. Hey, I like to see anybody on their face seeking God. Because I'm like this. It don't matter how old you are. God still use you. Come on. He still use you. Hey, Amen. I'm going to ask this one, one question, and I'm going to quit. I'm going to turn this back. Does anybody in this house need prayer for anything? Come on. Thank you, Lord. There's healing power in here tonight. Healing power tonight. 